All right, hi guys. Uh, welcome to part one of a series of tutorials on how to build applications using Tkinter. Today we're going to create a simple application that allows you to add uh, and subtract values and then display the result. Let's go ahead and let's get started. First thing we want to do is we want to say we want to import the Tkinter library. So from Tkinter, um, import all of the available functionality, all the code, all the classes that we can use. If you don't have tkinter installed, you can install it using pip install tk. Um, now the next thing we want to do is we want to say window equals tk. This is creating an instance of tkinter. And this window corresponds to this whole thing right here. Um, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to create these labels and these inputs right here. Um, first, we're going to create the labels and text inputs, and then after that, we'll get to the buttons. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a label widget. Now, it's important to note as well that all of these um, things, all of these user interface elements in tkinter are called widgets. Um, so we're going to say label equals label1 equals label window, and then the text is going to be equal, is going to equal first number. Um, and we've got three labels right here, so we'll go ahead and create those. Um, we can just simply copy paste. So first number, second number, and then result. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to create our text inputs. And these are actually simpler. We don't even really we don't we really don't even need any input there. We're just going to say field one equals entry. It's called an entry widget. I guess it's for text entry. So we'll say field one, field uh, field two, um, and field three. Um, now what we want to do is we actually want to place these at a specific location um, in the uh, window. And before we do that, we're actually going to define the size of the window. We're going to say window equals um, 600 pixels across and 300 pixels in height. So 600, quote, 600x, 300. Actually, sorry, that's going to be window.geometry. We're basically um, adding a parameter into the window object that we created right here. So based on this size, we're going to place these elements at specific locations. So the first label, we're going to do label1. terrible at typing dot place and we're gonna place this um, we're gonna place this 100 pixels from the side and 50 pixels down so we're gonna say X equals 100 uh, y equals 50 now we want our field one uh, which is right here um, to also be 50 pixels down but we actually want it to be 250 pixels from the side so we'll say field one dot place x equals 250 uh, y equals 50. Now for the rest of our labels and fields, um, this distance, this horizontal distance is going to remain the same because they're all going to be aligned, but the vertical distance will change. Um, so we can just copy paste this and the x, as we said, the x will be the same, but for label two and field two, um, the Y will be 100, so it'll be 100 pixels down from the top. And right here, we actually need we need to save space for the buttons. So our result, label, and field will be even further down. So rather than just a 50 pixel difference, we'll have a uh, 100 pixel difference. So we'll say label 3.place, uh, field 3.place, and then Y equals 200 for both of them. Okay, um, next one, what we want to do is we want to work on our buttons. And we're going to do that by creating button widgets. Actually, let's fix this. Let's just change this to result. Result number sounds weird. But anyways, we're going to get to button one equals button. Take window as input. Kind of scroll down here. Uh, take window as input. Remember that window is coming from right up here. Um, and 
we want to give it text. So we'll say text equals add. And then uh, subtract. So add and subtract. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to allow these to basically add up the numbers that are in these text inputs, these entry widgets, and then display the result right here when we click add and subtract respectively. Um, so what we want to do is first we want to create a, well, we're going to say command equals lambda, which is creating an anonymous function. An anonymous function is, an, is a function that will, that will have no name and only exists within this line. This anonymous function is not going to have any parameters, but it's going to execute a function called add. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and define that function. So we're going to say def add uh, num1, num2, and then result field. Those are going to be the inputs. Okay. So we're basically going to input the number that's stored in field one and field two, and then we're going to give field three itself to this function. So we would say add uh, field one dot get to get the value that's right here. For example, 29 uh, field two dot get and then field three. Um, so it's going to give us our num one, num two and result field right here. Now we're going to handle that by first clearing out field three. We're going to say field three dot delete. Uh, zero and and that's going to delete everything from zero to the end right here um, and or rather I think it would be from zero to the end right here either way it clears everything out um, and then what we're going to do is actually I think we can mm, need to fix our parentheses here we'll get to that in a moment Anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to do feet, we're going to do um, result equals int num1 uh, plus int num2. And basically when we take, when we get do field1.get and field2.get, we're getting um, whatever is typed in here as a string. So we need to cast those two integers. And then we're going to display the result in field3 right here. We're going to say field3 uh, dot insert end string result. Um, and we also want to create a, so basically what, what we're doing right here is we're clearing out the field right here. We are adding, we're taking what's in field one and field two, adding it together, and then displaying the result, which we cast into a string because we can only type in and display strings in these fields. We'll do the same thing for subtract. It's going to be the, it's going to be the exact same function. Um, we're just going to subtract right here. I could probably do it in the same function, but I didn't want too many parameters and I just want to kind of keep things simple. So what we can do here is we can do command and we need to have a comma right here. And that's pretty much it. Um, so we should call this button too. Now, the last thing we want to do is we actually want to place these. So we want to place these in this location right here. So we're going to say, um, uh, button one dot place x equals 100 and y equals 50 y equals 150 so right here this was at 50 this was at 100 this is at 200 um, this is going to put the buttons like roughly in the middle right here and they're both going to be aligned um, with our text inputs so for this we'll say x equals 100 um, for this, we'll say x equals 250. Which, that pretty much looks all right. It looks like it's starting right, like our 250 is kind of starting right here. And it's inserting it behind that, but um, for now it's fine. So button 2 dot place rather. Um, so basically, we created the window. Um, we've created all of the user elements. So all the UI elements, actually user interface elements. Um, we've put them all in positions. We created functions to um, allow us to deal with the data in those user inputs in a meaningful way. Um, right here, we create the size of the window. So 600 by 300. We also want to add a title down here. 
window.title. We'll say um, intro to tkinter. And then um, we've created all of these all of these user interface elements. We've created this window. But to actually run this program, um, we need to execute all of this code. We need to do window.main loop. Um, if you're familiar with PySimple GUI, uh, this is essentially the event loop. I mean, it works differently, but same concept. So now that we've written all this code um, to create this window, this is actually just an example program. Let's go ahead and execute this for real so we can see if there are any errors and how we might deal with them. So right here, we've got first number. Let's do 23, 54, add. Ooh, that's actually subtracted. So we got our add and subtract mixed up right here. Ah, because these both have the same number, the same um, name. Let's go ahead and let's fix that. We just change the name and we also need to do this right here. Okay. Um, cool. All right, let's go ahead and exit out. And let's try that again. Okay, so 23, 45, add, we got our sum. Um, subtract, we've got our difference. So yeah, you know, when I'm running these tutorials, I make mistakes, but I fix them. And that helps you kind of fix any problems in your own um, code as well. So I think one thing that I want to fix actually is I want to say, instead of just going straight to field three, I want to do result field right here, because that didn't really make sense. So we'll do result field instead. Um, because we are actually inputting um, our code right here, our field three into our function. So let's go ahead and let's just run that and let's see if that works. 23, 45, let's add, subtract. All right, we're cool. Okay. Now just a cosmetic change. Um, we can still run field three in here if you want to, but this is just more like by the syntax of Python, it just makes a lot more sense. Um, also, notice these functions are actually below this line of code. Normally, that would normally that wouldn't work, but like basically all of this code is only being run down here when you do window dot main loop. Um, and kind of as a result of that, even if we have these functions down here that are being used up here, all this code is interpreted before this is executed. So it's fine to do that. Um, if we wanted, we could just put this these functions right up here. And it would still work perfectly fine. Wouldn't make a difference. Um, anyways, that is part one of intro to tkinter. One thing to keep in mind is that actually these like tkinter applications do look differently on Windows and desktop. Um, and like initially I had the size of 400 by 300, but it looked fine on Windows, but not on Mac, so I had to change the size. So if you're creating applications that are going to be used across platforms, across operating systems, you're going to need to take that account, take that into account, and make sure that your application looks reasonable on both platforms. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this and you found value in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Have a nice day.